Sage grouse are an interesting species and a fun species. They're what's called a lecking species, and so they return every spring to a communal breeding ground where the males puff up their air sacs and do kind of a dance. I always think that they kind of look like they're from a Transformers movie or something. They're a little camouflage bird, and then all of a sudden they, they transform into this big thing that's strutting around with big yellow air sacs. Their display is really something else. Their chests are like shaking when they make the sound. The sound they make you would not expect to, to hear from a bird. It's, it's, it's like something from a different planet. Sage grouse are, are kind of a funny little species, and, and people might not understand why sage grouse are important. Sage grouse are a sagebrush obligate, which means that they're tied heavily to the amount of sagebrush and the type of sagebrush that we have. They eat sagebrush, which is not very common for animals to do. So um, the condition that the sagebrush is in is crucial to their livelihood. They're also an important part of this ecosystem, the sagebrush steppe. They share the habitat with a lot of other species. So if they're doing well, then we know everything else is probably doing well too. They're certainly an indicator species for a healthy landscape and a healthy ecosystem, which is something I think everybody wants. Not very many. So BYU started doing sage grouse research way back in the late 1990s to try and recover the sage grouse population in Strawberry Valley. In the 1930s and 40s, there were maybe 3,500. By the late 1990s, it had crashed to 150. Typically, these projects involve capturing grouse at night, fitting them with some kind of a tracking device. I put a student on either side of me with a, a long pole net, and I've got the backpack generator with a spotlight, and we go out and we're, we're just looking for sage grouse, and once we see them, the people on either side of me rush forward and, and they net the bird. We take a few measurements, and then we either strap on a radio collar or a, a GPS harness. The GPS transmitters are, are automated. Uh, so four or five times a day, they'll, the satellite will get a fix on that bird, and then once a week, I download that data, and I know exactly where that bird's been all week. Uh, with the radio collars, it's a little bit trickier. We have to do some on-ground tracking. The sage grouse have a really large home range. I've heard sometimes that they have a range of about 40 miles, and for a bird, that's pretty incredible. They get a radio antenna, they'll physically track the bird. It kind of gives a hot or cold signal until you can actually see the bird. We've worked since 1998 as a university to try and recover this population, and now the population is over 400, maybe getting close to 500. One of the very, very few positive stories for sage grouse across the Western United States. As we continue to do research and as we continue to manage this species, we'll continue to see sage grouse in the future.